are tuned to Kenneth Cena Cablevision. Thank you for watching. It's time for talk. Each evening at this time, Monday through Friday, Rosemary interviews local personalities and others who bring items of interest to this community. Time for Talk is a community betterment service designed to cooperate with our local community betterment program. Tonight, Rosemary takes us by means of portable camera out of our studios and maybe into your neighborhood. And now, it's time for talk. Have you driven through town lately and seen the signs Citizens Savings Bank and thought to yourself, when on earth was that ever Citizen Savings? I remember that as the Bank of Kennett. This afternoon, we're spending the afternoon sitting here on the lawn of the courthouse, and we have talked a gentleman into us who has agreed to come out here and sit in the sunshine, talk with us about what the square looked in 1850 when he was born. Uh, <laughs> I got a startled look out of that. This is Mr. Paul Price, and Paul, you haven't really been around since 1850, but you've been around quite a while. Well, way before 1850. <laughs> All right, Mr. Paul Price, who has been, uh, who was born uh, not far, not many blocks from here, but it was practically in the, you couldn't, it was not the end of the world, but you could see it from there. Uh, Paul, did I hear you say at one time you lived all your life uh, in that one, one street house? Street 10 North Walnut Street, Kent, Missouri. I've been there all my life. And it was the end of town, wasn't it? Well, more than less. A little bit. Two rocks would get you from the country. Oh, all right. Plum now, in the country. All right. Now, Paul has been a businessman here in Kennett for, for lo these many years and done lots of things. Paul, when I first knew you, you were, uh, you had the bus line for the whole school system here in um, Kennedy. Did you have a, was it a taxi service? Was it, what else was it? Well, I operated what they call a city bus line for a while and it went broke almost. They got to haul the kids for the school and that brought me out of the hard times. Uh, okay. All right, now, we're sitting here and going to reminisce a little bit about what some of these buildings were as the old timers remember it. Uh, talk to me a bit about uh, the bank that was here, the Citizen Savings Bank. Um, what happened well, to it? The Citizen Savings Bank, I believe, was built around 1922. But then uh, there was a grocery store there run by people named the Wheelers. And it had burnt, and the Citizen Savings Bank built the present building there, which ended up being the Bank of Kennedy. Okay, now what happened to Citizen Savings? Citizen Savings Bank went busted in 1926. Okay. Uh, in about the summer of 1926. Okay. All right. Now, next to um, Citizen Saving is... Uh, South of Citizen Saving Bank was what they call J.D. Spence's Hardware. Now, was that Dr. Spence? Was that his... His Dr. Spence's father. Oh, okay. He had a brother named Amos, and he was a radio bug back in those days. What do you mean a radio bug? Uh, there wasn't any in town, and he got to making a radio... And during the 20s, we'd come to town and gather in front of Spence Hardware and listen to Dempsey and different people he'd have fights with. Okay, you mean he made this radio? He made the radio, as far as I'm understanding. That's all I've always okay, done. And you'd walk over there and everybody could listen to the prize fights or anything that outside, went on? Outside. 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 Oh, okay. Did, did quite a few people gather? To, was that uh, a big event? Well, in my lifetime, when I was small, it would be a big event, maybe 25 to 50 people. Yeah, okay. All right. Now, going south from uh, what used to be J.C. Penney and the hardware store to Edward well, Jones. That, of course, where Spence Hardware was ended up being, in this day and time, J.C. Penney. Yeah. But then south of that was a man named John Burnett, which I don't recall. I knew the man, but had an open saloon. What do you mean an open saloon? Well, it was just a bar where you go in and get drinks. Didn't oh, have any okay. Open. I, it was open. Yeah, I thought you meant open air. No, it was it was open. You could go and get what you wanted to. Okay, all right. And south of that, across the alley, which people would know now, is a beauty shop and a barber shop. Well, originally, that was the Cotton Exchange Bank. Oh, it was. Well, now, uh, was that there at the same time the Citizen Savings was there, or was that earlier or later? To my knowledge, I think would be there at that time. Okay, so there were two banks on that side. Yeah. Uh, all right, and that was the cotton. It, to your knowledge, was that the first 
home of the Cotton Exchange Bank? To my knowledge, that was the first home of the Cotton okay. Exchange okay. Bank. Okay, all right. And of course, in that same building in later years, they had a uh, Saunders uh, grocery store in there that you went in and put a quarter in, and you get two cans of beans out. Uh, Piggly Wiggly. Well, well, what do you mean? You put a quarter in, and you, what did you put a quarter a in? Vending machine type grocery. Really? Really. Uh, what years are we talking about? Are we talking uh, about the 20s? More than likely sometime in the 30s, early 30s. And you could put, you actually put money in slots and you could get different different things out? Uh, there was a slot for beans and one for the, tomatoes? The tomatoes, they what you wanted. It was, it was just like a Coca-Cola machine except it uh, bended. bended canned goods. Well, do you remember what happened to it? Do you remember well, the end? Uh, the end of it, Charlie McGee was the operator of it and owned the deal from Saunders, but he, I guess, went broke and decided it wasn't paying off and quit. Oh, boy, if you had to have a vending machine for every kind of thing you've got on the shelf, you, you had problems. Okay, now, Paul, let's back, Let's start the other direction from uh, the car. Have you got something else down that way that we... Well, no, basically no. Not... Okay, all right, let's go, uh, let's start with the... Let's start with the... Uh... Oh, okay. Let's start with the, now this, uh, I know I have heard from people in the past, this uh, Shelton building was the first brick building on the square. Uh, I have heard, let's see, uh, I believe I heard um, Ms. Mobley or Ms. Donaldson tell the story that they didn't think, everybody said why that brick, the sand will never hold that brick building up. And they, they all waited to see it just fade into the bottom and it didn't do it. That's possible. <laughs> It's a good story, anyway. That may not be right, but that's what I've heard. Okay, tell me what you know about the uh, well, Shelton building. The Shelton building, originally, which what I remember, is called Shelton Red to Wear. And um, he, run a, he did have a grocery store, more or less, in the back of it, to my knowledge. But, of course, it ended up in the 20s, uh, going out of business, maybe, and J.C. Penney originally was in that building. And uh, everybody... All the kids in town always worked for J.C. Penney. He went to work at 7 o'clock in the morning and quit at midnight. Oh, no, dollar really? Half, dollar and a half a Saturday. Have you ever worked there for J.C.? Oh, um, a whole lot. <laughs> you go to work at 7 and get off at midnight? Get off and you cut, pick up the broom and start sweeping out at midnight. For, for what, a dollar and a half? A dollar and a half a night, a day. Well, now, did you have, did you work there, was there a lot of business? Is that what kept well, you there to those hours? On, or? on Saturdays, you kept busy selling 59 cent ox, ox hide overalls and uh, ox 25, 25 cent blue shirts. Okay, 25 cent blue denim shirts. Blue denim shirts. Okay, and, and 59 cent overalls. 59 cent overalls, you, ox hide. Oxide. I've never even heard if, of it. If you had 79, you could buy a payday. And payday was better. 79. Okay, now see Oshkosh and Lee, and I'm I'm just uh, I'm just Johnny come lately yeah. on this. All right, from J C Penney's. Now I tell you, the pink building I remember when I came here is Blakemore Drug. What do you remember? Well, all I remember is, is Blakemore's drug store. But I found out that E A Ball had a drug store in there earlier before Blakemore came in. If that's right. But of course, next door to that, E.A. Baldwin had a furniture store. Okay, now where something special something is special. now uh, was a furniture store. Furniture store, and upstairs they had the embalming service. Furniture. And, now, you know that was quite common in the early days to have a, a furniture store and an embalming thing. I guess because of the sale of the caskets and whatnot, the same trucks that brought in the furniture. Do you think that's why it was? Really, I don't know. Okay, all right. Now, you had another story about uh, the embalming and the uh, uh, business there. Didn't you have a business right across the street? Well, it, during that time, I had a service station located where the present post office is. And they tore down the service station about 1938 or 37 along in there. But prior to the service station, there was an open lot there, and a man named Dr. Rob open up an Aerodome Theater, outside theater, open air theater. Okay, now what would he show? What well, what was in there? Really, I don't know. So was it probably these old crank kind of movies? Mo things? More like it was in the silent movie days. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, of course, he, he went out of business for some reason or other, and it ended up being a um, boxing ring. And he's a local man here named Beckham Southern Sr., was quite a boxer in those days. 
Okay, well, now, would would you just box among yourselves here in town, or would people come in and challenge? Or? No, they'd bring, they'd bring outside fighters in, and there was a man named, they called him Wop Stoneman, was a, quite a fighter out of Cena that I can recall. That's the only ones I can recall. Wop Stoneman. 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 Okay. He was heavier than Beckham, but they could put on a real good fight. I, I can tell your sympathies were all for Beckham. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, you, you really yelled. For, did you ever fight? Never did fight. All I ever did when that was going on was sell soda pop. And how much was soda pop? Well, I imagine a nickel on the corner was a uh, hamburger stand that had about six or seven stools on it. Uh, over by the, where the uh, post uh, office is. Okay. The service station, was the hamburger stand there when your service station no, was there? No, they tore the brick wall down when they built the service station where the okay. fighting arena was. And there was an open air theater right there. Listen, that was the cultural center of Kennett then. If there was an open air theater where the post office is and where James Conn's is, I know from earlier interview was the opera house. That's all I have. I wasn't around when the opera was going on, I don't think. I don't remember. But I do uh, remember going up there and watching them play basketball. Okay, who played basketball? Was it uh, was Kenneth? it a gym? No, it was Kenneth High School Gymnasium. Oh, it, well, I didn't know that. I knew uh, it was the opera house. I knew it housed Ely Walker plant for a while while uh, it, the the regular factory was being built. I didn't know it was the Kenneth High Gymnasium. Well, prior to that, you get me to reminisce and name of last one had a wicker furniture store. They uh, manufactured wicker wicker furniture up there for years. Up, upstairs over James Conn. Upstairs over James Conn. Okay, now we have gone up. And we've made some pictures of some graffiti that's on the wall all over uh, uh, some old, that dates back to 1900 and 1904. Yes, in the early 1920s, uh, Ely Walker, which at that time was headquartered in St. Louis, decided that they would build a factory in Kennett. And they picked the location, but it would take them about two years to build a building, get the machinery here. This building, at that time, had already ceased to be used as an opera house, and Mr. Frank Shelton owned it at the time and made it available to Ely Walker as a home for the factory until they could get located in the new building, which, is, which was being constructed in South Main. So this, for about three years, was the home of the Ely Walker Shirt Factory, the original home of the Ely Walker Shirt Factory. Interesting. I think in your camera's eye right now, you see uh, from this opera house the view across to the Ely Walker plant. Completed in what year, Saul? Uh, the plant was completed, I believe, in approximately 1924. Mm -hmm. The building stayed empty then until 1925 when my uncle came to Kennett and rented the small corner portion of it initially. All right. As we sweep across this wall, it has been written on and rewritten on, and you are hard-pressed to really pick out the message because it's uh, uh, three layers deep. But I believe I see something that indicated she stoops to conquer. Uh, must have been one of the plays, and then a lot of names and a lot of initials, which really mean nothing to us at this point. But there is something interesting over here in the corner that we would like to, uh, to focus on because we can really get a definite time period on that. April 2nd, 1901, written on the wall here in the corner. And above that, you see two figures that are very, um, well, graphic is the only word I know. She has, uh, uh, the artist was not the very best, but uh, he was expressive. Coming down from that, uh, layers and layers of graffiti until we get down to 1-8-19-3, January the 8th, 1903. And we make out the words none but, and the rest of the words are here, something on stage. We missed that part of it. But on top of that, Saul looks like it's vote for Woodrow vote Wilson. Vote for Woodrow Wilson, yes, uh, quite clearly, definitely. Uh, you think, uh, what year are we talking about now? Well, we were talking about 1912, when Wilson was uh, first elected. 1912. See, Saul's much... You're about to leave out. We're, we're standing here, sitting on this flower box. It used to be the first bandstand, as I understand, in Kennett, Missouri. Okay. Uh, now, there's been some controversy over that. Uh, didn't, didn't somebody put this bandstand on a different side of the courthouse on a mural? Well, but that's on the northeast corner. Okay, was there a bandstand there, too? There was a bandstand on the northeast corner. So, but this one was the first one? This was the first one here. We've been going around the square and reminiscing. I've been listening, Paul's been reminiscing about the way the square looked way back when. Uh, uh, as he said, he doesn't go back all that far, but he's just remembering what his grandpa told him. We hope you've enjoyed a backward look into Kenneth's history today. Uh
You have been watching Time for Talk. Time for Talk is a community betterment service designed to cooperate with our local community betterment program. Each evening, Monday through Friday at this time, Rosemary interviews local personalities and others who bring items of interest to this community. If you are aware of items of interest, please let us know for possible airing on this program.